What's up guys, Knocker here. Today I'm bringing you a much requested review on the new Dev Adder Chroma by Razer. So let's continue. We're gonna go through the specs, my experience so far with the mouse, and we're gonna go ahead and answer some of your questions that you left in the unboxing video in the comments below. Now, if you haven't seen the unboxing video and you would like to, I'll leave a notation right here in the video so you can click at and actually go watch it yourself. To start off, let's go through the list of specs the Dev Adder Chroma carries. So first, it has an ergonomic right-handed design with textured rubber side grips. There are two side grips on the left and the right side of the lower mouse. When my hand is resting on the mouse, my thumb and my pinky rest on it quite nice and it's actually pretty comfortable instead of it having it rested on a hard plastic surface. Next, it carries a 10,000 DPI optical sensor. As you can see, the Dev Adder Chroma also carries a 4G optical sensor with a 10,000 DPI. Compared to the Dev Adder 2013 version, which also has a 4G optical sensor. Chroma lighting, with 16.8 million customizable color options. Now in order for you to do this, you will have to go ahead and download the software and go into the color wheel. The color wheel will actually give you many sorts of options with different colors, from shades, from some, some combinations between colors, and that will probably be any color you want, you can choose from, which is the whole purpose of this whole Chroma line. It's also Razer Synapse enabled. Now what this means, you can go ahead and download Razer software, which will connect to your mouse and enable you to access all the features the mouse carries, like changing the DPI, the color, the speed, and more. Five independently programmable height response buttons. Going back into Synapse under Customize, the five height response buttons include the left click, right click, the scroll click, the mouse button 4, and mouse button 5. Just those five are labeled as hype response buttons. But you can also go ahead and also customize the scroll up and scroll down. So a total of seven customizable buttons are there for you to play around with. The 10,000 hertz ultra polling. It's pretty much the amount of time the firmware in the mouse reports its tracking data from and to your computer. On the fly sensitivity adjustment. This is pretty simple. Let's say you're in the middle of a game. Well, you can go ahead and open Synapse and be able to adjust your sensitivity without having to restart your game or even turn on, turn off your mouse. You can quickly go back into your game with your new settings and continue having your gaming adventure. The always on mode. This just means your sensor never goes into a standby option to a power down option, leaving your mouse always enabled ready for continuous gaming without any tracking disruptions from your mouse sensor. Next, it's capable of 200 inches per second and 50G acceleration, which is the speed the mouse can move in, whether it be up, down, or left and right. The gold plated USB connector. There isn't much to it. If you saw in the unboxing video, you can actually go ahead and see the actual gold-plated USB connector. It's pretty simple stuff. There's nothing special about it. It just looks cool. Being a Razer product, the mouse has a 7-foot lightweight braided fiber cable. Unlike most electronics that carry the generic plastic cover cable, the mouse carries a nice fiber cable which feels and looks nice on your desk and coming out of the mouse. Now that we've gone through the specs, I'm going to go ahead and give you my quick opinion and experience so far with the mouse. Now remember, I've only had the mouse less than 2 weeks, so there's not really much I can say so far. To start off, I was a bit worried that my hand would have to take some time adjusting to the feel of the mouse. I soon realized that there was no need for that. The grooves and the design of the mouse made it really comfortable. The two grooves on the left and the right click sit well with my index fingers and my mouse sits comfortable on the side because of those rubber grips, as well as my pinky finger. Aside from that, the mouse is really responsive. Note that I'm actually using my mouse on a, on a hard wooden surface with no mouse pad. So far it's tracking quite well and I haven't had any, any disruptions with the actual sensor itself. Although the mouse does offer a 10,000 DPI, I have yet to even touch anywhere near that DPI. But it's nice to see that you have some sort of option for that type of DPI range. The fact that you can change the lighting color in the mouse is the main purpose for the whole chroma line of products by Razer. After being able to mess around with the colors, I got to explore some of the options with the help of some apps. You can actually go ahead and customize the scroll wheel and the logo color separately so you can have two different colors. Meaning you can actually pick one color for the scroll wheel and one different color for the actual logo on the mouse. I found this to be pretty cool and you can actually pick any color with the color wheel that's actually in the program itself. But not only can you change the color, you can actually go ahead and change the movement of the color, so to say. One being a static. Static means the color actually just stays in one spot and it's just one solid color that you choose from. Next will be breathing. Breathing, I guess you can call it a pulsating or kind of a pulsating view which, which it fades in and out. You can actually only do that with the actual logo and not the actual scroll wheel. Next, you got the actual color cycling option. Color cycling just goes through every color that's available in the actual program or any color that that mouse can actually do. And that includes the scroll wheel and the, and the actual logo. Now, my hand was on the mouse most of the time and that corrupt the lighting which is expected. 
So there really wasn't much to show off when you're, when you're gaming. As far as you know, you can actually be holding Death Adder 2013 if you, had, if you hadn't looked down and lift up your, your actual hand and saw the lighting colors. Now, as for the mouse itself, it's a gaming mouse. It's really comfortable, it does what it's supposed to, and has a variety of features and it looks pretty on your desk. So that was my quick opinion and experience with the actual mouse and I gave you some information hopefully that helps some of you guys. Now let's, let's answer some of your questions that will hopefully answer those who are watching this video. Tech New Ponds asks, so there's no difference between this one and the thermal death adder besides the 10k and the chroma right? Yes. The multicolor option and the higher DPI are the only main differences compared to the original death adder. I feel like Razer wanted to bring something else to their chroma line besides the color option so they also updated their DPI range. Vegeta Plays asks, what is your new sensor? I've actually gone ahead and left my sensor at 1800 for now until I slowly start exploring a higher DPI that, will be, that I will be more comfortable with. Matt Cameron YT asks, could you let me know if it attracts dust and fingerprints easily? I've come to notice that it does attract fingerprints, but they're not easily visible because of the dark color. As for dust, it does attract some dust particles, but they're easily wiped off and they're not much of an issue. But looking at the bottom of the mouse, you can actually expect some dust there because, you know, tables are dust magnets and your mouse is always sitting on it and sliding on it, so that's expected. Epic Doom Roll to Server 1 I want to know your opinion on the new 10,000 DPI sensor in the Death Adder Chroma. I actually already answered this in the comments, but I'm going to go ahead and give you my opinion for those who have missed it. I read the worries and the criticism on why Razer was, would offer such a ridiculous high DPI. I soon realized that although the, the mouse are for that, it wasn't necessary for yourself to even get, a, get up that high. As you can see, the Synapse software gives you the range to go up to 10,000 DPI. I see it as Razer giving its gamers more options. If you're into using high, higher DPI, more than the previous Death Adder which offered 6400, then go ahead and, and, and go ahead and use that DPI, or anywhere near it, because this mouse gives you that option. If you're not into using a high DPI, then you can always leave it as it is on its, on, on its uh, default or whichever you're more comfortable with. But it's not mandatory, it's only an option. You have the choice, Racer is just giving you more options to explore. Alex Tusher, Tusher. I'm probably, I'm probably pronouncing your name wrong dude, but anyways, Alex, is it worth it, reliable for its cost? If you have the money to waste for such a pricey mouse compared to the 2013 Death Adder, then I would say yes. It's a nice looking mouse, comfortable, and it does what it's supposed to do. It's also good to know that Razer also offers a free 1 year warranty on the mouse. For its reliability, I can't really answer that question based on the fact that I've only had this mouse for less than 2 weeks. But since the new Death Adder Chroma is carrying similar or just about the same mechanics, there have been some reports with some clicking issues where the components seem to fail over time due to wear and tear or possible poor hardware in the mouse. But then again, that's why Razer offers a free 1 year warranty with the mouse. It gives you some sort of peace of mind for your investment. So far it's working perfectly for me, but we'll see in a year or so. It's Quizo LOL. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that right. Death Adder Chroma 70 bucks, Death Adder 2013 52 bucks. What do you think after using it? Would you buy it? Thanks for the advice. To begin, both mouses are retailed at $69.99 from Razer's website. This excludes Amazon which I'm sure you can find the 2013 version around the $50 range. But that's all before taxes and shipping of course. But since on Amazon the 2013 version is actually $51.99, it all comes down to preference and budget. The Death Adder Chroma and the 2013 version have small and few differences. One being the range in DPI where the 2013 version has a DPI of 6400 and the Chroma has a 10,000 DPI range. Secondly, the Chroma version gives you the option to customize the color on the mouse, both the scroll wheel and the logo. Both mouses have the same design, same feel, and same 4G optical sensor. My opinion, my opinion is if you are looking into buying your first Death Adder and don't mind the price, then I go ahead and get that Chroma version. If you already own a Death Adder and are thinking about upgrading to a Chroma version, I would say save your money. Unless you really care about using the high DPI and having a pretty mouse. If you have the money to spend, then I say why not. It's a comfortable mouse, sleek design, looks pretty and it does what it's supposed to do. At the end, it all comes down to you and how you want to spend your money. So far, I'm loving the mouse and I'm happy with it. Plus, it adds some color to my desk and it looks just pretty awesome. So thanks for watching my review on the Death Adder Chroma by Razer. Feel free to leave your opinions on the video and or the product below. If you found this video helpful, leave, leave me a thumbs up on the video. And if you're new to the video, hit that subscribe button for more upcoming content. And I'll see you guys later. Peace.